Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another Kano Tryharding Modern. We're playing, uh, we're playing Green Tron again, because that's what everybody wants to see me play. <laughs> we're going to be doing a Modern League with Green Tron today. And I have to say, uh, this is the most recent list I've been playing around with. Um, it's a little bit different. It, like, basically switches up to complete four ofs of every single card it's playing, except the top, top end threats. Um, we've got four Oblivion Stones in this list. Um, no relics in the main deck. We've got four uh, worm coil engines, and then like the standard Ugins, Karns, Ulamogs, but we also have an Ugin the Ineffable, which is a card I actually kind of like in Green Tron. I think this card is maybe a little bit underrated in a lot of decks that could be playing it. And um, of course, a main deck Sundering Titan. And because we have Sundering Titan, we're also playing Yabi Maya. So, out of the sideboard, we've got three Force of Vigors. Um, we have a couple of duplicate cards in the form of Relic and Chalice, which are normally for Wishboard only, but we can bring Chalice in versus something like Living End. Um, it can be good. This list originally had an Emrakul in the side. I replaced it with an Engineered Explosives, because I don't really like having two Giant Eldrazi. Kozilek is good enough versus Control and Mill. Um, I've never really had the mana to cast Emrakul and actually been able to win the game. So um, that's the adjustments we're playing right now. And we are going to go ahead and go into the Modern League. Oh, hang on. All right, Command Exclamation Point Deck, if you're here on stream, should get you a link to the deck list that I'm going to be playing. Uh, where is it? Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Okay. Well, I can go Los at the moment. I mean, you can play Golos. It's a it's a reasonable package you can play in a lot of decks. Um, you know, because it, it gives you an alternate way to cast your giant spells. It gives you a way to dig in the late game if you're getting flooded. You know everybody really wants to see you play Blue Tron? Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm not a very good Blue Tron player. How can Kano, who can't read, assemble decks of cards? Very, very simple. They have pictures on them. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, it can be quite good, especially because Golos can get the uh, the filter land. Um, the indestructible one that can filter five colors of mana into, uh, you know, five of any color into five of every, one of every color. I can't remember the name of it right now. No wonder Kano doesn't like the full text lands, no pictures. Yeah, no kidding. I'd have to go by color for those. Yeah, Cascading Cataracts, that's the one. So I, I just learned this morning, by the way... Uh, quite awkwardly, I have a family party, like an extended family party, that's scheduled for June 25th. <laughs> the same day I just qualified for a tournament. And it's like, uh, so so my plan for that day is I'm going to start streaming, because the party is not until the afternoon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start streaming at 9, and if I just go like completely undefeated, I'm going to keep playing. But if I'm, if I'm really losing out by the time, like, one, two o'clock rolls around, I will probably just leave and go to my family's party. Yes, it is Father's Day. I took him out for lunch this, or took him out for breakfast this morning at a local place here in town. We had some omelets and some pancakes, and it was good. Um, got him a card. I don't think he's seen the card yet, but uh, he's, he's doing good. All right. So this is a mulligan. He's out doing dad stuff right now. I think he's mowing the lawn. This is turn three Tron into Karn, so I will be keeping this. We'll put back an Ancient Stirrings. We are playing against Yorian. So we're on the play. We should have turn three Tron. As long as we can avoid like a cleansing wildfire or a ghost quarter, I think we'll be all right. So this is four color Yorian. This is not the um, death and taxes Yorian. So, Sac Chromatic Star for green, play tower, scrying, let's go get power plant, pass the turn, force negation, that's true. Force negation will really only buy them a turn, though. Oh, do they play Obsidian Charma? Okay, Pota plays a Renin 6, upticks Renin 6 to pick up a land, we draw Karn, Great Creator, play Karn Liberated, Take out a land. Pass the turn. Right, yes, I remember that now. Okay, opponent fetches and shocks a breeding pool, then casts expressive iteration. They play a Mishra's Bauble. 
They uptick to pick up a land, and they bobble us. Then they discard to hand size. Discard a run and six. We untap, they draw a card. We draw Karn, Great Creator. Okay. Play Karn, Great Creator. Down tick. We are going to get a Trinisphere and take out another land. Okay, take out Breeding Pool. This just stops them from casting any spells. Uh, we're, we're playing, you know, Stone Rain dot deck at the moment. We draw a land, we can Sundering Titan, and that should win the game. Um, if we don't draw a land, we can Karn and take out Renin 6 so they can't ult Renin 6. Not that ulting Renin 6 would actually do anything as long as they're not able to cast spells, but... Okay. Um, I think we just play Big Karn. All right. What is that, five stone rains later, we win the game. <laughs> okay, let's see, versus Yorian. They're gonna have like Magus of the Moon, or Dovin's Vetoes, um, Obsidian Charmaw. I do not like Torpor Orb. I, I really never have. I understand why people play it, and I think it's an okay lock, like hate piece or a lock piece, but I have I have never really liked the card. I think there's too many ways to answer it. Especially now that, like, a lot of the creature decks, if, if you had Torpor Orb, realistically their only answer to artifacts was, like, Reclamation Sage or Night of, Night of Autism or something. Night of Autism, oh my gosh. Night of Autumn! <laughs> I am so sorry, that's not what I meant to say. <laughs> Night of Autumn. Oh, man, I have not had all my coffee this morning, and I am misspeaking. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That is not what I meant to say. No, I don't. I don't actually watch Magic Aids. I've seen a couple of his videos, but I don't watch him. I don't watch any Magic YouTuber. Um, I don't have the time. So we are going to... I might need... Does he really? Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, I might need Force of Vigor... Some of them play Utopia Sprawl and stuff, so like Force of Vigor might matter if they have a Damping Sphere or something. I'm not sure they do. I'm going to run it back as is and see what I run into, probably. <laughs> yeah. Alright, Natural Tron. Oh, never mind. Sorry, we have two towers. Wow, I'm really not on top of my game today. Um, I think I can mulligan this quite safely. There's not a lot of like dig or action in that hand. This hand doesn't work either. Okay, I, I can make this work. So we can put back a Scrying and a Power Plant. This is a turn three car in hand. Alright, opponent starts Forest, Abundant Growth. Play Chromatic Sphere, pass the turn. They Chromatic Sphere, or they, they Prismatic Ending my Chromatic Sphere. Which is unfortunate, but I mean we could still top deck a tower and be completely fine here. Opponent plays an island. We draw a chromatic star. I am going to spin star immediately if it resolves to cast ancient stirrings. Okay, ancient stirrings. Okay, opponent has a counter spell. Pass the turn. We untap. Hey, we drew tower. Play Karn. Opponent has another counter spell. Okay. <laughs> counter spell. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, we untap. Draw an Urza's Mine. Well, any land gets us to double Ulamog, and we should be fine. Opponent is missing land drops, so... They play a Bauble, which they must have drawn this turn. Okay. Any land. Any land is good here. There it is. Blast Zone. Ulamog. Knock out their lands. Hey, Halsey, how's it going? Been a while. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Why are you evoking solitude now? You're supposed to let him enter the battlefield. <laughs> what? What is happening? They solituded solitude and solituded with prismatic ending. Halsey, thank you for resubscribing. Thirteen months. It's a long time. Yeah, I think my opponent did punt that. 13 plus at this point? Yeah, yeah. Alright, opponent scoops. Now well, we got round one. 
Sorry, I wasn't keeping track of the match wins there, but eh, sometimes that's just how it goes. Man, you know, Halsey, I'm I'm tired too. I've <laughs> it's just ever since I got up today. I was up um I was up very late last night trying to get the um constructed token for the championship and I did end up getting it, so we, we have qualified and we have both halves of the entry token. Commander's an evil format that's got you by the nut. Why you say that? Expensive or just punishing and not enjoying? Like <laughs> Uh, Albo, thank you for resubscribing. Six months now. Six months in a row. Fantastic. Uh, the championship is Modern Horizons 2 sealed until it cuts to top eight, and then it is a Modern Horizons 2 draft. Tell, tell you if it's expensive? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can tell it's expensive. It's got an LED in there. CEDH is, is very, very silly. Can't no time to make the topic. I will say it's a format I know very well. So hopefully I can do decently. All right, I would like to play first. Uh, this is a mulligan. This is also a mulligan. And a mulligan. All right, well, I don't want to go to three. So I will keep four here. We're going to put back Ugin, Karn, and Osnow, I think. We will start tower map. Maximum greed. Pass the turn. You listed LED twice. <laughs> I can tell you are tired. Oh no. <laughs> well, it's um, it's Amulet Titan, which we are almost 100% to lose. Uh, play a second Urza's Tower, which does not bode well for our chances. Dang, dude. Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, we're gonna go with uh, Power Plant, I guess. We draw Karn, which is just unfortunately not what we were looking for. Play Chromatic Sphere. Pass the turn. Black Lotus, but fixed. Supposedly, the story behind LED is the same guy that made one with nothing made LED, and he used to purposefully try and get cards that were too bad to see play into the game. And uh, LED ended up being one of those cards. And now it's, in some situations, it's actually better than Black Lotus. Yeah, Brain Freeze and Underworld Breach would like to know your location. No kidding. So, um, the Vintage Cube videos I've been doing, I technically killed a guy on turn one with Brain Freeze, Underworld Breach, LED. Like, it, it happened. You won't see it for a long time, so anybody who's watching that series will likely forget, but it's nasty. I've never done that before. Uh, we're like 100% to lose this. <laughs> That's fun. Opponent transmutes Talaria West, gets a Summoner's Pact. Plays a Hanware Battlements. They hit us for three. We go to 15. Uh, yeah. Play an Expedition Map. Let's go get Nurse's Mine. I think we're still dead. Um, if I draw... it, I mean, because my opponent's going to be able to play a Titan this turn. Oh, they just have a million Besiegeus. What is that, Besiege number three? Okay. That's fine. <laughs> nice. Nice. Alright, we're definitely bringing in forces here. Uh, I'm going to cut an Oblivion Stone and some Worm Coil Engines. And I could bring in Chalice to put on zero for Summoner's Pact. That can matter. I don't know that that's good, though. It might be better than just, like, random worm coil engine or something. Bring in one chalice? Okay, I can see that. We'll cut, uh, cut another worm coil engine for a chalice. I would like to play first. This hand is not capable. We will mulligan. Uh, this hand is a turn three Tron. So we're going to drop a Karn Great Creator. Play Chromatic Star, pass the turn. Trinisphere helps, but it's better to keep in the wishboard in this matchup. There's only specific circumstances under which it can be good. Okay, we draw a Force. Unfortunately, our opponent did not start like Saga Map or Saga Amulet. 
Um, so sack star for green. We drew mine. So I think I just replay star, actually. So what we're doing is... Oh, whoops, I almost deleted my, my stream view. <laughs> I am so tired today. I'm just making silly mistakes here. Can't even talk. Silly stakes. Yep, that's me. Okay, opponent plays a forest and passes. They pithing needle. Let's see if they name the right thing. How? They must be stream sniping. There's no way on a blind name that they got that right. Oh, I was supposed to force. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Yeah, no kidding. I, I could do that. All right. Yeah, I I'm going to force this turn. I just want to see if he's going to give me an opportunity to force something better. Okay, opponent summoner's pact. Well, if it's Dryad, we're going to force the Dryad. Oh, this person is going to be in pain. We're going ultra greed here. And we're not killing Dryad because we're going to get Sundering Titan and kill this person. Because they just packed it and they're not going to have any lands. The legend! <laughs> Alright. Run it back. <laughs> he knew not to force just to have it. Yeah, exactly. Calculated. Uh, never didn't always have it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely was supposed to force immediately, but... Punting, punting into the correct line is like my signature move. Um, Alright, this is a mulligan. This is also a mulligan. Alright, uh, we're putting back Sphere and a Power Plant. Big braino. <laughs> Opponent leads Forest Arboreal Grazer. Reverse stream sniping, duh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this person is... They're obviously streaming. Kano's obviously watching. He has an extensive espionage network. How's Porter doing? He's doing pretty good. He's he's sleeping on his little bed here. I don't have his uh, camera set up. I can't find it. Um, but it's around somewhere. Okay, opponent is Summoner's Pacting again. They're getting a dry out of the Elysian Grove. And playing a Hanware Battlements. And playing an Amulet. God, Kano, move better. I know, right? Um, so we play a power plant, pass the turn, opponent has to pay four mana or they lose. Okay, opponent has the four mana. They attack us for two. Okay, we need to get tower here. Okay, let me think about what they could have here. So we're playing Karn this turn, that's what we're doing. The question is, what are we doing with Karn? If they have two lands in Titan, I can't stop them. But if they have two lands in Titan, I need to take out Simic Growth Chamber. If they have a bounce land, I need to take out Amulet. They have no lands? I mean, just because they didn't play it out doesn't mean they don't have any lands. But it is, it is, I guess it's less likely for them to have a land. I mean, we get a single land, we're fine. We just Sundering Titan and win the game. I guess we just go for the mana. The problem is if they have Bounce Land Titan, Amulet of Vigor gets them to Titan. I think if I play Karn and take out Amulet, they have to have Amulet, Bounce Land, and Titan or Cultivator Colossus to actually win the game. Yeah, I think the correct choice is to take out Amulet of Vigor here. Because if I take out Amulet, they would have to have Land, Land, Titan, and they didn't play any lands last turn, and if they had non-Bounce Lands, I think they would have played them. Yeah, we're going to take out Amulet. Pass the turn. Now we just need to draw any land and it's game over. If they can play a Titan this turn, there's a chance we die. Opponent plays an Outland Liberator. Gives it haste. So they can kill Karn. Okay, show me any land off the top. Any land. There's 15 lands in the deck. I just need one. There it is. Get him. All right. Opponent's turn. We're gonna get the Flawless with Ugin. That's the best part. Play Ugin. Oh, opponent sent me a message. Perfect hand. Nice. Yeah, no, actually, we were not 
like, we're less than 5% to win that matchup, and we just beat them. That is not likely at all. <laughs> I only won the first game because I threw it. <laughs> Absolutely punted. Got the correct line. That's true. I, if, I if I played him off stream, I would lose every single time. Like, no question. I still play to win, but it's just a, such a difficult matchup. Alright, we're on the play. This hand's awful. We're gonna mulligan. Okay, natural Tron car, and I'm gonna keep. Uh, we're gonna put back Expedition Map. We'll start Mine Chromatic Sphere. We kept this over Map because this is gonna draw us another couple cards on the way to Tron. I even drew them in the right order, that's correct, Albo. Okay, opponent starts Misty Rainforest, Prismatic Ending. Alright, play Power Plant. Play Chromatic Star. Sack Star for green. We draw Blast Zone, Ancient Stirrings. Uh, we're gonna take a Karn Liberated. Rest of the bottom. I could have picked up a redundant Tron land there, though, but if they have a way to interrupt my mana base, they would just go for the other one. Um, I would rather take the threat. Okay, play Karn. Yeah, that was natural Tron. Opponent has Force, pitching Ice Fang. Sure. Okay, opponent cracks Misty. Getting a Spara's Headquarters. What is this, Yorianless Yorian? Money Pile minus Yorian. Okay, we draw another Urza's Mine. Play Karn. They do not have Yorian. They did not reveal Yorian. All right. So there's some sort of Snowland, Ice Fang, Prismatic Ending, Force of Will deck, or Force of Negation. Um, I don't think I want Force of Vigors. I could bring in Relic for, like, Renin 6. I don't think that's necessary. I, I think I'm just going to run it back. We get to see another Absolute Greed video. You mean Money Mountain? Which which Absolute Greed video are we talking about? Oh, Trinisphere and Ballista. No, I'm not going to side in Trinisphere. Ballista would be fine, but I don't think I need it. Yeah, we haven't seen the last of Money Mountain. I just haven't had the chance to update it yet. And it takes a long time to think through updating that deck. I can pilot it drunk, but I need to think through it when I'm building it. <laughs> All right, you will keep. Oh, the other thing I'm, I forgot to mention, I am on call. Uh, I am on call today, so if I have to uh, get pulled off for something, I apologize. I do have my laptop down here with me, and I will let you guys know if it happened. Opponent kept a one lander. We draw a and liberated planers as mine, pass the turn. Opponent cracks Misty Rainforest, gets a Spara's headquarters. And passes. Let's go get a tower. Draw another Urza's Mine. Play a tower. Play a Karn. Opponent forces. Pitching an Ice Fang. Pass the turn. They find a Plains. They play Lavinia. Each opponent cannot cast non-creature spells with mana value greater than the number of lands that player controls. Sure. Sundering Titan is a creature. Play Sundering Titan. <laughs> Oh, we got him! Oh, we absolutely got him! <laughs> oh, man! Yeah, I could have played Little Karn, too. That wouldn't have been a problem. Uh, and realistically, the line there was like, Little Karn, get Ballista, kill Lavinia, right? But... Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we got him. How many matches has this Titan won for me? At least two today. <laughs> like, the the main deck Titan. Sundering Titan is a really good card. And Yavi Maya and Urborg make it really, really good. So if you're playing a deck with Yavi Maya or, um, you know, Urborg, and you can get to Titan mana, you should probably play Titan. Because it's just like, play it, Armageddon your opponent, have a 7-10. Oh, it died, Armageddon them again. Sundere Titan? Oh no! <laughs> We don't, we don't need, I'm glad, you know, if Silver were here, <laughs> Silver would, Silver would altar to Sundering Titan. Oh, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should put like anime eyes on a, on a Sundering Titan. <laughs> oh, it's definitely, it's good in Bluetron even. And you don't, in Bluetron you don't even have the, um, yeah, Natural Tron. Maybe, maybe I can do that for like a, 
a Kano auction. Have have me paint up an altar, and then and we can get it out to the community. I'll make like two, and one will be a random giveaway. The other one will be like an auction or something like that. Oh yeah, treasure mage. That's true. And generally in Bluetron, you get to like eight mana pretty good, pretty easily. Hey Draco, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, no, today we are doing quite well. Oh man, I, I am still not awake. I had more coffee than usual too. I, I, I think it's just because I stayed up last night. Should have played Tower first. Yeah, I mean like I guess to play around the, the um, possibility for like a, a game one ghost quarter or something like that. Opponent has Mulligan to five. They lead on an Arid Mesa. Uh, definitely not the mirror and giver of runes, okay. We draw the third tower. Tower Tron achieved. So this is probably like hammer, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's hammer. Opponent misses a land drop. Well, play Karn. Exile the land. We're exiling the land because they missed a land drop. Coffers control. Yeah, I, I did some testing with Coffers Control uh, recently. I have some ideas that I have not seen anybody else do with the deck. Nobody has talked about it on my Discord or Trellins. Um, I'm not sure they're good, but it's something, like I said, I've not seen other people do, so I'm interested in trying. Um, but I, I need to test it more first just to like see if it's even, even a thing. I guess I want three Worm Coil. I guess Chalice in this matchup, if we can stick it on one fast enough, is pretty good. Engineered Explosives is good, but I think I leave it in the side. Walking Ballista can be a decent... Let's just run it back. Oh, you still have a Golgari version? Fair. That's fair. I, I, I haven't really played the two-color versions of it yet, so I suppose I could do that. Okay, we don't have force. Did I even bring in force? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, this is this is a mulligan. It doesn't do anything. This is also a mulligan because it doesn't do anything. We're going to four. All right. Um, we're keeping Tronland, Tronland, Sphere Karn. Opponent kept seven, so this isn't likely a work. Start windswept heath ornithopter. Okay, we draw an Ancient Stirrings. Play Chromatic Sphere. Opponent cracks Windswept Heath for a Hollowed Fountain untapped. Spell Pierces. Spell Pierce is reasonable if you see your opponent mulligan to four. <laughs> I mean, we just need to draw an Urza's Mine. Or Force. Urza's Mine or Force would be good here. Okay, opponent plays a Stoneforge Mystic. They're probably going to reveal Hammer. They do. We untap. We draw another power plant. I was excited for a second. Okay. Yeah, I think Mana Tithe would be trollier, but like... Spell Pierce is, I think, technically better, especially if you're already blue-white for like Prismatic Ending. Okay, Punna plays Sigarda's Aid, so we will be getting smacked with a Hammer. Opponent hits us for 11, we go to 9. Oh, well, we draw a forest. Um, does that do anything? I don't think that does anything. Cycle. Alright, we're dead. Moving on to game 3. We will be on the play for game 3. I think on the play, I'm going to bring in a chalice and drop an Ugin. Because if we can play Chalice on one, it's it's going to be basically game over for them unless they can find an answer, which no doubt they have somewhere. <clears throat> oh man, tip of my nose is really itchy for some reason. Bring in a relic and side out Ugin just to draw. Yeah, right now I am staying temporarily with my parents while I look for a house. I went to two house showings yesterday. One of them had a ton of promise, it just had too many problems. 
I've looked at like 10 or 11 houses across the last two weeks, and the only one that was worth purchasing got bought while I was at my showing looking at it. First hand was a mulligan, this one's a mulligan also. Oh, this has force and a land, but I don't know that that's going to be enough to slow my opponent down. Yeah, I think I've got to go to four. All right, we're going to keep this. I just don't think we can go any lower. We're going to put back Yavi Maya, Sphere, and Stirrings, I think. Maybe I should have kept Stirrings in case I drew a Force. Yeah. No, nothing is staying on the market long. I can't imagine. Like, I, I, so I moved here basically from across the country, and if I had had to try and sort out all of the things I needed to to buy a house in addition to just organizing the move, I would have died of stress. It would have been impossible. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to call that a punt. I should not have kept Sanctum. I should have... Um, I should have kept the stirrings. It's looking like my opponent's hand is not too fantastic. Yeah, that's true. So put a place Saga into Stoneforge Mystic, getting a Cauldra complete. A cycle for green. We get a Karn. Let's go get an Urza's Mine. And play out a star. Pass the turn. Saga ticking up to two. I mean, we get two draws at trying to find a tower. I think technically three with Chromatic Sphere. Okay, opponent plays a Windswept Teeth. An opponent just passes. We draw a Power Plant. That does let us play Karn. And we did not get a tower, but I think we do need to play Karn here. Okay, opponent cracks Windswept Teeth. Gets a Plains. I think we are going to have to go for Bridge. Mm, they have a mana leak. Okay. So now we basically have the top deck tower. The opponent's just making a token. That's actually good for us. It tells us they don't have a lot. Oh, if they Pithing Needle Karn Great Creator, we are in trouble. Karn Liberated. Okay, they named the wrong one. Thankfully, because we already played one. It's not likely we have two of the same. And the Steel Shaper's Gift. Getting Hammer. So we take six this turn at least, and they play out the hammer. That's interesting. Okay, we go to 14. We draw a Chromatic Sphere. So I can play Karn. Let me think about this. I can play Karn, and I can wish. I'm taking a minimum of 11 next turn. I can play Karn, and I can wish for something like Engineered Explosives. I can play it for Bridge. I'm going down to like three or two, and if my opponent has even just like an Ornithopter and another Hammer, I'm dead. They hit Karn, you take less than 11, unless they kill me. Unless they have enough artifacts to pump that Construct token up to, to, to kill me. Which is possible. Um, I think it's just play Karn and wish for Bridge. The only other line that looks remotely interesting is to like play Sphere and Cycle to try and hit a Tower. I think if I had a green card in my hand instead of one of these spheres between tower and hitting force, it would actually be worth doing, but I think the only thing I can do is Karn and Wish for Bridge. And just hope that, um, I guess they have Springleaf Drum, so they can Prismatic Ending a Bridge away, but yeah, I think, I think if we had access to a green card between the probability of drawing a tower and the probability of drawing force... We would have been fine. Opponent leads on Stoneforge Mystic, getting another Colossus Hammer. They play Silent Clearing. Okay. So they do have the mana to Prismatic Ending Bridge if, or, yeah, if they have it. Which they currently do not. But that is exactly, no, that's one off of Lethal. Six and seven's 13, I go to one. Problem is right now, if I, I can't empty my hand for Bridge. So I'm going to die to like Stoneforge Mystics attacking. Yeah, I'm dead to Stoneforge Mystics attacking right now. Okay, they swing all out at me. We go to one. We draw a land. Okay, 
That actually keeps me alive. Because that lets me play my whole hand. Believe it or not. So we uptick Karn. Um, I guess I animate a sphere to potentially block. Though that doesn't... You know, I'm, I'm dead to anything that can attack. They cycle Silent Clearing, so they no longer have Prismatic Ending mana. And they play an Esper Sentinel. We untap. We draw Tower. That lets me wish for Oblivion Stone. So play Tower. Wish. Get Oblivion Stone. Play Tower. I will pay the one. Pass the turn. Fate counter on Bridge. I think it's actually Fate counter on Karn, but... Yeah, we can fate counter bridge. We untap. We draw another Karn Great Creator. So I can go... Let's see. I have 8, 11, 12 mana. I can play Sundering Titan, but I can't crack O-Stone after. Cauldra's... Oh, Cauldra's Indestructible. That's a good good thing to point out. Um... What am I doing here? I think I need to... Pl I, I don't want to unlock any of their artifact mana at all. So I'm going to play out Karn. Pay one to prevent. Or keep the new Karn, because they'll have higher um, loyalty. And I'm just going to uptick this turn. Oh, I should have actually upticked on Cauldra. Yeah, the germ is indestructible too. If I upticked on Cauldra, it falls off of the germ token. Yes, that is that is correct, Elbow. That I, that is what I should have done. Okay, we untap. We draw another tower. Does that unlock anything new here? That lets me play Sundering Titan and be able to sack O Stone. So I'm gonna do that because that blows up all their lands. I'm not gonna activate O Stone this turn, but I am gonna get Sundering Titan. I could go get a Worm Coil too, but I don't think I want it. Yeah, we'll, we'll put a Fate Counter on Karn this turn. I'm not sacking Sanctum. So we kill their Hollowed Fountain and a Plains. This just means if I do sack Oblivion Stone on my turn next turn, we can kill all of their permanents and they can't do anything about it. So Fate Counter on Karn. I have, um, but not in green Tron. Okay, if I pass the turn with a card in my hand, I die? Probably yes. So we're going to uptick on Cauldra. And then sack Sphere for green. Sack Sphere for green. Activate Oblivion Stone. Oh, actually, I can play Yavi Maya and take out their second land no matter what, so we're going to do that. Okay, take out a forest and a plains. Then we Karn, Sac Sanctum, get Ulamog, and Nuke Cauldra. Now I can even play Expedition Map. Pass the turn. Yeah, we definitely wanted to crack the spheres before we blew up the world. Opponent plays an Ornithopter. Nuking Cauldra there seems sus. I don't know about that. We untap. We draw another Karn. I don't know. They like they could have something that could kill Ensnaring Bridge. I'm just not going to chance it. Okay, play Ulamog. Take out their remaining permanents. And they give us the game at one life. All right, well, we're 4-0 going into round five. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Love my lame dancing. <laughs> Who am I and what did I do with Kano? I know, right? Not my birthday, MC Top, but welcome. Good to have you back. Thank you, Draco. Appreciate that. Don't remember Tron winning. I don't know. Today it seems like we are just beating face. So. Happy birthday! Not my birthday, but thank you.
All right, round five, we're on the draw. That's not good for us, but we are gonna mulligan this hand, which is also not good for us. This hand is infinitely better, so I will be keeping, and I'm gonna put back the second map. <laughs> no, Kano birthday bot. It is not Kano's birthday. Uh, opponent leads on Hollowed Fountain, so this is either Control or Hammer, and given that we're in the undefeated bracket, it's probably Hammer. Okay, prismatic ending. Maybe it's not. Opponent plays Odawara. We draw Worm Coil Engine, so players as tower. Play Chromatic Star. Sack Star for green. Let's see what we draw. Ancient Stirrings. Ancient Stirrings. Let's try and hit a power plant. Unfortunately, we did not hit a power plant. Um, I am going to take... Oh, I thought that was six mana, Ugin. I am going to take another Chromatic Star. Okay, rest of the bottom. Pass the turn. Hey, Hyper Voice. Uh, those are likely not going to remain that high. Those particular Imperial Seals, because they said that uh, initial pricing for new cards was going to be based off their previous pricing. I imagine that's going to come way down on the newer prints. All right, opponent is going to ice our tower. Okay. What is my opponent playing? Is it control? Is this just guy control? Kind of looks that way. So we're going to Sylvan Scrying. We're going to get Power Plant. Pass the turn. There is a near mint foil Imperial Sale for uh, 450 bucks. Yeah, yeah, because it was a um, it was a judge promo before, and those are those are extremely limited from what I remember in quantity. Okay, we draw a Blast Zone. Opponent's going to ice our tower again. All right. Well, play Power Plant. Play Karn. Um. So what is my opponent playing, and what should I get against them? It's probably Liquid Metal Coating here. I think we do actually get Liquid Metal Coating, and then I'm going to Ancient Stirrings. Uh, let's pick up Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Because we're really close to casting that. Okay, opponent flashes in a Snapcaster. Blue-white control splashes a Triumph for fire. Okay, so that... Yeah, that means they're, like, technically Jeskai, but not really Jeskai, I suppose. Subvalo is blocking the library view. What? No, it's not. Are you talking about the record? It's just blocking my... Like, yes or no actions. My library view is underneath it. Oh, oh. Um, okay. We draw another Ulamog. So, play Liquid Metal Coating. We're going to blow up... Okay, opponent Archmage's Charm to counter Liquid Metal Coating. That's fine. So we play Blast Zone. Play Worm Coil. And then play Star, Animate Star to block. And we're going to go for, like, if we draw a land, we're going to cast Ulamogs. If we don't draw a land, we're going to cast Sundering Titans. want to play a Mystic Gate. want to play a Teferi Time Raveler. They unsummon Worm Coil. <laughs> hey, John, glad you could tune in. Um, let me think here. Opponent does attack Karn. We will block Snapcaster. We draw Oblivion Stone. Okay, well, I mean, if we're just going to draw Sundering Titan, then I suppose there's no reason not to play Sundering Titan. Uptick Karn to three. Play Sundering Titan. If they counter this... Okay, cool. We're in the finals and we're up a game. Yes, this one has a main deck Sundering Titan. I'm looking up a blue-white control wrist list that's recent, so I kind of know what I have to play around. So they're going to have March, Dovin's Veto, Wear and Tear, possibly Summary Dismissal. They do play Chalice, um, so they could put, like, Chalice on one to stop a lot of our cycling. And other than, like, Teferi and Solitude, we don't really have to worry about anything. So I think I'm going to put Kozilek in the main deck. <laughs> um... 
Worm Coil Engine is less good in this matchup, so we can do a swap there to have a Worm Coil Engine on the side. I don't really think I need Force for anything. It's possible they're playing Spreading Seas. <clears throat> oh, is this is this that person's list? I just grabbed. I didn't look. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's the only swap I'm going to make. We're going to try this. All right. It's turn three Tron. We're going to keep. Opponent starts with Raugren Triome. Exclamation point deck will get you a link to my stream decker. That should have uh, the list that I'm playing particularly. The stream decker might have an Emmercool in the side. I replaced that with a engineered explosives. Okay, opponent puts a chalice on one. So there goes like half our spells. Um, we're going to play power plant. Go get tower. Actually, I can get Besiege you to deal with Chalice if I want to, like, play my Cyclers. I think I'm going to take the Tower, though, because this way if I just draw Ulamog or Kozilek, I can play a big Eldrazi. Like, I that way I have the two Towers, specifically, I mean. Okay, opponent has a Spreading Seas on Urza's Mine. That's fine because we have a second Urza's Mine. So opponent guessed wrong on that front. Uh, we'll play Tower, pass the turn. Oh, oh, I'm too weak. Have mercy, control player. You've limited my options so much. Uh, Urza's mine. Unlimited power! <laughs> Play Karn? <laughs> Call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! But not for me. <laughs> Alright, pass the turn. I mean, we just need to draw another threat. We're good. How is Besiege even going to be cast? Uh, we would have to, like, get a Yavi Maya or something. Okay, play another tower. Emotional <laughs> <That's damage. the> <laughs> uh, Opponent seems to be missing some land drops. It looks like an Archmage's Charm to draw cards. That's exactly what it is. Oh, we have Sanctum, so, like, we draw any big spell. They didn't hit a fourth land? Oh, man. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to Forest and Sylvan Scrying. We're gonna go get Besiege you. We do have to be careful about using Besiege you on Chalice. Oh, they're gonna counter Sylvan Scrying? I don't know about that, but okay. Isn't Tron usually favored against Blue White Control? Uh, frequently it can be, depending on the metagame. There are some Blue White Control lists that you will not have a good time with. So cast Ulamog. We're just gonna take out uh, Raugren Triumph, Hollowed Fountain. And Sack Sanctum to go get a second Ulamog. They predicted the Bosiju. That's true. That's probably what happened. So memory Deluges in response. That's good. That means they don't have a counter for Ulamog unless they're playing Subtlety, which is possible. Uh, let's go get a second Ulamog. Opponent on taps. They play a field. Field that power plant you know you want to. The correct choice is mine, but... Opponent cannot beat a resolved Ulamog. We have gone 5-0 with Tron. All right. Let's open some treasure chest, huh? The good old second Ulamog. I know, right? Uh, so first treasure chest. 15 play points and a flame scroll celebrant. Second treasure chest. Five play points, a growing rites of Itlamok, and a Malamo Maro sorcerer. Treasure chest number three, five play points, a extended art park height, uh, park heights Pegasus, and a Genesis wave. Treasure chest number four, twenty-five play points and a Godless shrine. Treasure chest number five, ten play points and an hour of promise. It's not my birthday. <laughs> uh, treasure chest number six. We've got five play points. Ooh, Sunbaked Canyon. That's definitely worth something. Treasure chest number seven. Uh, 20 play points and a Cabaretti Initiate Avatar. That's interesting. Oh, and Root Maze. Root Maze is fun. Let's see. Happy birthday! <laughs> Treasure chest number, what is that, eight? Five play points, a Freyalis Lanawar's Fury. I don't know if that's worth anything or not. Anybody want to confirm? Let's see. I've got I've got goldfish open. Let's see. Freya Lee's Lanoir's Fury. 
Um, the Commander Collection Green does not have a moto cost listed, so it must be it might be a new edition. Um, third to last. 15 play points and a trick bind. Second to last, the penultimate treasure chest we've won. 10 play points and a Liliana of the Dark Realms. Do love Liliana of the Dark Realms. Personal favorite. Final treasure chest. Let's see what we can open. Five play points, a Silver Blade Paladin, and a Spoils of. All right. That's a pretty decent haul. I think we did pretty good today. So for uh, the people here on Twitch, I'm going to keep streaming. I'm going to be playing a little bit of Vintage Cube after this. For the people on YouTube, though, who are watching this later, I will be cutting the video off here. So thank you so much if you're watching this on YouTube. You can come over and follow me on Twitch. Same username as over uh, uh, here, where I am currently streaming from, as my username on YouTube. Uh, we tend to stream Tron, we tend to stream on Sundays, at least right now, and um, thank you so much for watching, you're all wonderful human beings, and I will see you guys in the next video.